that's homo, my homo cysteine you tested also right derek and it was also good yeah which for me is only a concern being c677t yeah, homozygous mthfr for me my ability to methylate is severely impaired so i end up with higher homocysteine if i don't supplement with choline or betaine or Creatine. um 5 mthf for yeah. uh, methylfolate rather than folic acid um stuff like that creatine yeah so for me um having a good homocysteine is like really good quick so, quick so, qu question question i want to go and probably don't have time to discuss five amino one mq but uh which is a fat um loss aid so to say do you Derek? Yeah. do you notice that fat loss is gradual and doesn't stagnate towards the end where you're getting like six percent body fat or eight percent body fat do you notice that because you have a methylation uh uh, polymorphism um well it's kind of hard for me to say for certain like what because i don't have a comparison yeah. metric as yeah, far as like way. myself before like i guess before and after supplementing with methyl donors and stuff to kind of like rectify my situation i don't really notice a difference personally mm, okay. no yeah. yeah like for me it's like if i'm eating little enough and doing enough en energy expenditure i lose fat at the rate at which i would expect it's okay. kind of like do you, I would always do, you, do you feel like you stagnate where you have to go to extreme lengths to get the last little bit of fat off towards the end um yeah but i also have like really shallow abs for me i have to get mm. really fucking lean to get yeah. the leanness that i desire from an abdominal separation aspect but by that point everything else is like so lean I shouldn't even be dieting at that point because it's not sustainable to walk around at. So like, yeah, so it's a stubborn, stubborn body fat on your abs, basically. Yeah. And everywhere so else like, you get lean. Yeah. So for me, I'm, uh, I don't know, like the, the last bit, I feel like it's less about that. It's hard and more so that when anyone gets to sub 2,500, 2,400 calories with cardio, you feel like shit. Yeah. You know, so, so, so I, 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 I wouldn't that, say it's stubborn and stagnates as much as it's just way more impossible to adhere to it in a sustainable way. But if I could hypothetically, if I had no appetite because I took like Adderall every day or something and semaglutide and everything under the sun, I'm sure it would not stagnate. So, no, right. yeah. Yeah. So that this is why I was researching so much about 5-amino-1-MQ, which is an N-methyl transferase inhibitor which inhibits the methylation of nicotinamide. And it's the nicotinamide oh, that wow. contributes oh. to um, fat metabolism within the fat cell. So of course, when your metabolism slows down, the actual fat metabolism within the fat cell gets less and less and less. So you get less lipolysis or lipolysis and less brown fat activation, um, keeping your body temperature elevated. So this is a method to remove the cap off that. So I've been trialing that extensively, but I think um you might want to discuss that after we're done with this blood work if, uh, if well we... we're already discussing it now like uh, okay so met methylation so my mm. ability to methylate is supposedly like 10 to 20 percent of somebody with no polymorphisms in their yeah. mthfr um S and smps so for mm. this five amino stuff yeah, the mechanism of action and implications it has for somebody with impaired methylation versus not what mm -hmm. exactly is going on again. So you're already you're already got impaired methylation of nicotinamide in the fat cell, making yeah. it easier to lose fat. And oh. people who, who don't have that issue that methylate a lot of nicotinamide, they might benefit from five amino methylquinolinium or quin let me see what it, what does it stand for? Let me just double I check. Think, I think if there was an oh, association, I think if there was an association between MTHF, MTHFR and related mm. polymorphisms, which by the way, are the most well-studied polymorphisms of all, if mm. there was an association with low body fat, I think, maybe I'm wrong, but I, I think it would have been noticed. No, so it's a very new research and there's oh, okay. multiple different nicotinamide and methyl transferase inhibitors and 5-amino methylquinolinium, I believe it stands for, mm is the most bioavailable, the most cell permeable in an MT inhibitor that is available. So I ran that through a compounding pharmacy here, and I noticed that fat loss was very, very dual. It just kept going, kept going, kept going. Kept so going. if I like, use that, would it fuck up my methylation to a point yes. that I literally can't like 
induce gene expression correctly? No, 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 not that, because it's very selective to nicotinamide and methyltransferase, so it doesn't inhibit the methylation of other enzymes, which apparently in the liver, there's a lot of methylating enzymes. So it only inhibits this NNMT enzyme, which uh, contributes to fat metabolism in the, or pr inhibiting this enzyme contributes to fat metabolism in the fat cells, adipose tissue, but not in the liver. So it's very selective. But I, I assume that your fat loss might be more gradual compared to others because of this uh, methylation um, issue that you have, which might be beneficial for fat loss. So other people so, would need to use this inhibitor to have gradual fat loss up until you get to the stubborn body fat that you need to kill calories and, and use, I don't know, all kinds of uh, methods to get the last little bit off. Bit off but yeah. Uh, the so enzymes for me, is there a almost, point given my severe impairment already, or is that just like pushing me to some level that's absurd? Probably, yeah. So you think and it's worth trying use a, because it's just to see what happens? I think. I think. Life. Let's say you next time you stall. Let's say you do another diet when when time is right yeah. and uh, you control your appetite. And when you start to stall, and you add fifty milligrams to one hundred milligrams in. So not the the dose I recommend on my YouTube channel because you already have a methylation issue, so you don't need to supplement much. You're just uh, supplementing on top. Then I think fifty to one hundred milligrams five amino one MQ would just gradually make you lose fat to the point it's almost easy. Because it made so fat loss for the, me stupid easy. So the literature supporting it, is this like a rodent supported rodent, yeah. research I'm the, chemical? I'm the first human to trial this appropriately with blood work before and after. No adverse changes on my blood work. The only thing that okay. I noticed is that fat loss was gradual. Again, I was in a caloric deficit. I was doing my cardio. I was walking in between sets. I was keeping my caloric intake steady. But I, that's the most gradual I ever lost fat from all parts of the body. So my back got more disproportionately lean uh, compared to previously without running this compound because it's the fat cell, uh, the metabolism within the fat cell that actually improves. So it's not actual right. fat burning, it's fat metabolism that improves or there's no cap on it. There's no adaptative process where fat metabolism slows down. So my body temperature was a little bit elevated no adverse reactions on my blood work. The only adverse study that I found is that N-methyltransferase uh, enzymes, methylation of nicotinamide, um, reduces oxidative stress in the endothelium. So taking okay. this long term might have an adverse effect on your endothelium, but estradiol has a protective effect. And so does vitamin C. So from the literature that you I've read, I would the, say that in the ER, are, the endothelium. Well, well, let, me, let me finish. Let me finish. <laughs> Which endothelium? Which the, endothelium? So in, 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 the, in the vascular system. So it's the the vascular system that uh, the endothelium is a space in between where, um, what nutrients from the blood vessels can enter the extracellular space and then into the cell. Okay. So this is a little so reducing oxidative stress. There is concerning. Uh, so it, what it, you might, just said. it might potentiate oxidative stress there by ah, inhibiting okay. this that's why i was i had to yeah. do because i know right, what sorry you're so yeah so 5 amino one mq inhibits this nicotinamide and methyl transferase enzymes which methylate nicotinamide into methyl nicotinamide and if you inhibit this process it might potentiate oxidative stress in the endothelium mm -hmm. but all there's a ton of different benefits it might be anti-cancer anti-obesity anti metabolic adaptation or metabolic uh, issues, right? Metabolic diseases. But that is of note that it might potentiate some negative effect in the endothelium, but keeping estradiol sufficiently high and supplementing with vitamin C might be able to offset. Yeah, phosphatidylserine might be able to offset that because those are all um, endothelial uh, oxidative stress protective, if that's the right word to explain it. Yeah. It's, so is this so, an appetite stimulatory compound, presumably? Don't notice anything on no. your appetite. The only thing you notice and, is when you're dieting is that fat loss is gradual. And how and you and your and this? your wallet is crying literally <laughs> because it's mad expensive, of course, because it's a new compound. How did you arrive at the fifty to one hundred milligram dose? Just extrapolating on rodent extrapolate, data. Just just trying it out. I started with fifty milligrams for two weeks, then I bumped it up to. 100 and 200 and then 150 to see if I notice a difference. And for so me, if you're doing a, the half-life is unknown, ahead. unfortunately. Um, yeah. Again, it's a new compound. A tailor-made does have it on his list, so it should be able to, uh, you know, come into the market. 
So hypothetically, if you were to introduce metabolic related agents, pharmacology wise during a cutting phase Mm -hmm. with the least risk and highest reward, like what, this is like the very last thing you'd put in even after clen and T3 and stuff. No, actually you put it because usually clen T3 and, and, and all these funky compounds, uh, you put in to take care of the last little bit of fat. And I think this will be an earlier step in that process because if it inhibits metabolic adaptation and makes your fat loss journey um, steady, then you don't need to throw in the clen. Well, you might still need to throw it in at the end, but maybe the exposure to clen instead of 10 weeks is only four weeks because you've been using 5-amino-1 MQ to potentiate fat loss and make it more gradual towards the end when you're stagnating otherwise. Right, when the fat cell metabolism is just getting worse and worse and worse. I read a study when fasting, um, NNMT enzyme activity goes up sky high. So that's actually mm-hmm. inhibiting fat metabolism within the fat cells after four or five days of fasting. That's why you see fat losses getting less and less and less the longer you're fasting because this uh, nicotinamide and methyltransferase activity is going up. More methylation of nicotinamide, reducing fat metabolism mm-hmm. in the fat cell.